Uh, okay, last time we talked about uh, multi-level security, uh, amongst other things, and compartments. Okay, so the thing about, you know, top secret, secret, confidential, unclassified, all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then compartments. Okay, so compartments were a way to split stuff up, you know, within uh, different groups like that. So you didn't have to, you know, keep trying to make high, bigger and bigger hierarchy, which wouldn't solve the problem anyway. Okay, so you could split things up and keep things, uh, you could enforce this so-called need-to-know principle and all that sort of stuff. Okay, now, um, there's a few topics here, and I guess it may not be obvious these are really related to uh, multi-level security, but they are, they're sort of uh, related in a way to uh, stuff we've talked about. Okay. So, okay, so covert uh, channels, uh, the first thing here, um, so multi-level security, okay, the purpose there is to restrict the flow of information, right? I mean, somebody's got a top secret clearance or secret clearance, they can't see top secret stuff, okay? That's the, you know, that's the idea, that's the whole point. Well, there may be other ways for people to communicate that are not intended, okay? So you know that you don't even think about as a means of communicating information. So in a sense, it's sort of like the steganography stuff we talked about, so people could communicate in ways that people wouldn't even expect that you're communicating. Okay, I guess this is a little more uh, general in a sense. We'll call this a covert channel, uh, and the definition here is gonna be a communication path that was not intended as such by whoever designed the system. Okay, so a way for people to communicate where it looks like they're just doing legitimate things that they're allowed to do with the system, okay? So, I mean, think about it. Here, here's sort of the scenario. So, Alice uh, has some top secret information. She wants to give it to Bob, who doesn't have a top secret clearance. So, what could she do? Well, she could take the document, fold it up, put it in her back pocket, and walk out the door, right? And then give it to Bob later. But that's illegal, and she would get arrested and put in jail if she got caught. Okay, so could she do something more subtle that would look like she's just doing ordinary things she does as part of her regular job that would allow her to communicate this information to Bob? and break the security of the system. That's the thinking. Uh, okay, so here's, uh, here's an example of a way that we could do this. Uh, again, uh, Alice has this top secret clearance. Let's suppose Bob, oh, he got downgraded, and just has confidential clearance now. Okay. Uh, and let's just say that the file space is shared. Okay, so this is kind of the situation where we use, well, where is everybody? This is just two, four, six. We have to have a quiz today. There's going to be a quiz today, I can promise you. I think the pattern of people is trying to send a, it's encoding something. Yeah, is this some covert channel here? You're giving me some secret information here? Okay. Secret is homework is due. <laughs> Homework's due. Homework was due. You know, I think I have it done now. It's, it doesn't do them any good. So. Uh, okay, so anyway, let's suppose the file space is shared by all the users. So this is the situation where you use multi level security, right? Where users with different levels of uh, clearance are trying to use the same resources. Okay, so they all can see the files uh, system. So you can see, so this assumption here is that you can see what files are out there, uh, but you only get to see the files that you have a clearance to see. Okay, you can see the names of all the files that exist out there what, regardless of what level they're at, but you can only actually view the ones that you're supposed to be able to see. Okay, so here's what Alice is gonna do to get information to Bob. She's going to create a file and give it a weird name that Alice and Bob agreed on ahead of time. And if that file is there, that's gonna to signal to Bob a one. And if it's not there, that's gonna to signal to Bob a zero, okay? So either she creates this file or not, Bob goes to look, and Alice has sent one top secret bit of information to Bob. <laughs> okay, one bit's probably not gonna do you too much good, right? But let's suppose that uh, once each minute, Bob goes and looks, and they synchronize their clocks. So once each minute, Bob will go and look and see if this file is there. And if Alice wants to send a one, she puts it there. If not, she makes sure it's not there, right, or deletes it. So she can send any amount of information she wants. Everything's bits, right? So she can send a long string of bits this way. It might take a while, but she can, in principle, send whatever she wants here. Photos. What's that? Large colored photos. <laughs> A video file, it's gonna take her the rest of her life, right? Uh, but the point is she can get some information to Bob, and she's just doing legitimate things, right? She's allowed to create and delete files, and this is not gonna look suspicious at all. 
unless somebody's really looking and says, hey, that's kind of weird to keep creating and deleting the same file, but you know, that's allowed. That's part of using the system. And Bob can look and see if miles are there. So it's something like this. Okay, we've got time down here, uh, and Bob is goes to check to see if the file is there. And suppose it's there, because Alice put it there, you know, their first degree period of time. So that's a one. Next bit one Alice wants to send is a zero, so she deletes the file. Then she wants to send a one, so she creates the file again. She wants to send another one, so she leaves the file there, and then she deletes, and so on and so forth. So in principle, she can send as many bits as she wants. Now, um, So, can you think of other possible covert channels that you might have in a system where people share resources? Other ways that you could communicate using the system in sort of legitimate ways? No? Well, how about like the uh, print queue? Same sort of thing, right? You could do some, put something on the print queue. People can see what's on the print queue. You could be even more clever. You could use different file names. It would give you more than one bit of information. Okay. How about networking protocols? Network protocols are built with all kinds of, you could do all kinds of timing things, and sending packets and so on. There's lots of possibilities here, I think, if you uh, think about it for a little bit. Uh, okay, in general, in this sort of general setting, uh, when does a covert channel exist? It really doesn't take very much. Okay, what has to happen is the sender and receiver have some resource they share. Okay, so they can both, you know, view the file system, something along those lines. Okay, then the sender and receiver have to have some property, or the sender has to have some property of that that they can change. Okay, so something can change that the receiver can observe has changed. Okay, and what else has to be true? There has to be some issue of timing, right? I mean, you can only give one bit or one set of bits of information. If you want to give more, you have to somehow synchronize, okay? So that's it, okay? That doesn't really, in general, that's not really asking for very much, right? Okay, so if you have that, you have the potential for a covert channel, okay? Well, so they're almost everywhere, and we'll see an example of a real-world sort of case involving a networking protocol here, in, or networking in a minute here, but it's not hard to come up with a covert channel. But it's actually easy to eliminate all covert channels, okay? You want to eliminate all covert channels? Easy, no problem. All you have to do is eliminate all shared resources and all communication. There you go. No more covert channels to worry about. Okay, but the problem is you've got this system that people are sharing and they're using the shared resource. That's sort of the whole point, at least in multi-level security. So the system wouldn't be very useful if you eliminated all covert channels. Okay. Okay, now uh, we mentioned in the uh, Orange Book stuff, right, that one of those levels they talk specifically about uh, eliminating covert channels reducing covert channels, something about covert channels, I remember B2 or something like that. So it's an issue, uh, and it's something that the military, you know, the Department of Defense has studied because they think this is a serious issue, uh, and their guidelines, or the high level, you know, high security guidelines for the Department of Defense say you should try to reduce the covert channel capacity to less than one bit per second, okay? So in other words, you know, you don't know what covert channels are possible, but whatever you can imagine, right, you try to make it so that Alice and Bob or whoever, Trudy, could not get more than one bit per second through. Okay, now what does that say? What does that imply? Well, it implies that they've given up on trying to eliminate covert channels. Okay, it's really hopeless to try to eliminate them. Okay, the best you can hope to do is to just reduce the number of bits that can get through in something like this. Okay, so okay, let's suppose you're really security conscious. You want to get this B2 certification or whatever back in the day, uh, and so you want to reduce the number of reduce the capacity of covert channels. So you do everything you can, and you succeed. You reduce the capacity of covert channels to no more than one bit per second. Success, right? Okay. Well, think about it. Uh, suppose you have a 100 mega, megabyte top secret file, okay? Now, 
you're in this multi-level security environment, right? So you have to store this file very carefully where people cannot get access to it. But the storage for top secret stuff, you know, that's costly. It's expensive to keep stuff there, you know, because it's got to be protected much more than other levels. So we don't want to use up 100 megabytes if we don't have to. So here's a clever idea. Instead of storing the file, let's encrypt the file with a strong cipher, you know, and a big key, you know, meets all the guidelines for storing top secret information. And then all we have to do is store the key in the top secret location. The encrypted bits can be stored anywhere, even unclassified, okay? Because nobody can decrypt those, they're protected. That's the point of decrypt of encrypting stuff, right? Okay, back to the covert channel. Now we've reduced our covert channel capacity to one bit per second, okay? We're really secure here, right? So if someone wants to leak this entire 100 megabyte document that was top secret at one bit per second, it's going to take them 25 years, and in 25 years we don't care, okay, because it's no longer secret anyway. Okay. On the other hand, if you did this thing, trick with encrypting it, how many bits do you have to leak? 256. 256. How long does it take to leak 256 bits in uh, at one bit per second? It takes you like five minutes. So, you know, reducing the capacity probably is helpful, but in certain scenarios, you know, it's just a few bits can be a serious problem, okay? 